We feel like it's a format that kind of gives us room to play, kind of group some songs together, take a room in smaller chunks. But we just started Tuk Tuk Records this year and uh, it's pretty exciting for us because it gives us the opportunity to kind of do whatever we want. the concept for this last batch of songs was to get some longer jams down and edit them into pieces. But when we went to rehearse these songs to play in New York, our rehearsals were way better than the, these jams we had and these, this edited piece that we had worked on for so long. And so we ended up going back to the drawing board and retracking the, the song as a band. One of the new songs is Girl from the North. That started with just like a little guitar line that felt good and them all started singing to it right off the bat. Zach and I, we always played na 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 all the time and be on tour. These last three songs that we've been working on, it's been a lot of just studio jams where we'll be playing an idea and kind of feel it and groove it for a while and then we'll agree that that's like a good part and we'll play it at sound check. I think we played it live for the first time like in Bats and Balls with another band with those guys from yeah, far. Yeah, from far. From yeah. far. So we jammed with the Fab and Luis Alapa. They are amazing. jammed with the FAR kids, it was just like, you know, playing music with your best friends and it felt really good and we were able to play this idea, which has now become Girl from the North with them. When I remember there was a reunit player, which is kind of like the xylophone, and he just shredded. <laughs> live with us that night. So when we come back from US and we do hustle and recording, jamming to the song, so I try to write a song. Girl from North is talk about the girl very uh, virgin and she's very shy and she's very traditional and saw the man one day and she just held the man. I know you like me or not, but this is how I feel for you. So you should tell your parents to come to talk to my parents. So about this really traditional Cambodian, yeah. Pretty excited about these first three songs that are going to come out on Tuk Tuk, especially uh, the one that we're playing with, uh, the deepest lake on the planet. Deepest lake we'll never go to. What's it called? Oh yeah, <laughs> deepest yeah. Lake. Deepest the deepest lake. lake. On this. The deepest lake we'll never swim in. Yeah. Yeah. We were going this summer to go to Russia to Lake Baikal. It's the first lake on the planet Earth. Oh, it is? It's, it's the first, first lake. And there's like 1,700 unique species just to that lake. All right, so it rains forever. It's pure, the, rain, the thing's getting filled. Okay, so now. Our life was created separate from others or something, you know what I mean? Because like that lake is its own thing. It's like it's its own life. The strengths of, of Dengue Fever has always been um, Chong Yi Mo's voice and her ability to sing the Kamai. Because I think Yi is really nailing. The vocals are just, it takes off where all of the Cambodian rock stopped. First, we started music and they wrote the English, translated to Cambodian. Nimal, especially in the early days, was concerned about the American audience being able to understand her lyrics and what she's singing about. Cambodian English is so different. Right from the start of the band, it was like kind of 
backwards, you know, translating songs from English into Khmer. Do you have to translate the too many syllables? When we're working on songs and translating them, we have a couple of different dictionaries. There's this old green one that's been with us for the whole history yeah, of the band. History of the band, yeah. yeah. We, we love that thing. There's way more syllables in, in Khmer than there is in English. And so we tend to try and write short stories, right? I know Cambodian, they understand and lyrics, these words, it must be more make sense. But when I translate to you guys, you guys not make sense. The English song would be a very abridged short story and it turns into like a you know, haiku by the time you're able to pull off what you need to pull off in Khmer. My English is the same like 10 years ago for me. That's what I think. It's not changed. You think? We have a new song called Taxi Dancer. I feel like, in terms of my experience of just doing the stuff on, this, on these new songs, it's about really going a little deeper within the dengue fever sound and pulling some new sounds out. Sort of, it reminds me a little bit of like, you know, Ethiopian grooves kind of stuff. <laughs> I like the way though, it feels like this kind of like slow game of tag, at least between some of our parts. They play, and then somebody else plays a chunk, and then you come back, and then it's like, it's like yeah. little trade-off things. Yeah. of what the songs mean in English because they're written in English. But then once the mall gets them and once we go through this whole translation process, I, I wonder what comes out the other side. I still don't know. I like the fact that like we don't have any set way to come up with a song. Like, there's no rigid formula for um, another hit song. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there definitely um, isn't. It's just kind of like give it whatever it's asking for. And this last batch was asking for a beating. <laughs>